Good morning, everybody. It is uh, Tuesday, the 4th of October. This is Nick McPhee, and this is episode 40. Hello, is it Sue? Um, always wonderful to see you. Episode 40, hard to imagine. 40 episodes, so 80 hours of this nonsense. Of Unhindered by Coding, where I'm programming um, in front of people and getting help and feedback and cool ideas. Um, and learning Rust, among other things. Um, so this week, so this month is a little weird. Um, this week we will have uh, two streams, and probably just two streams instead of four like we've been having. Um, we'll have today um, for two hours working on the Ice Repos project. Uh, and then tomorrow night, from seven to nine, working on the evolutionary computation project, um, which is otherwise known as an opportunity to keep Azitsu from getting enough sleep. Um, and then both Saturday uh, streams are probably not going to happen. Um, so it's the 50th anniversary celebration of the campus radio station, um, which I have been connected with for uh, nearly 30 years. And so I will have other things to be doing on Saturday. Um, and that'll be fun. And then next week, Tuesday morning, so this stream will happen. Um, but that'll be the only thing next week or the week after. Uh, because on Wednesday of next week, uh, we'll be traveling to Wisconsin to see our child who started graduate school in Madison and go up and see my mom and my sister in Oshkosh and go do some stuff in southern Wisconsin and yada yada yada. So we'll be driving around doing other things and I will not be programming. But we should be back um, the end of October and I'll post on uh, the Discord uh, links to join the Discord if you are so inclined um, are available here. Um, and I can also paste that in the chat in case that's more convenient for people. Oh, come on. Oh, stop it, computer. Um, and there's the chat link. And I will also be um, trying to keep um, things up to date on Twitter. Um, and so if those are useful, um, feel free to check those out. And I'll try to keep things uh, posted there. Um, so in the meantime, I think we have some programming to do. So maybe we should do it. Um, now. I have, was thinking some about, um, okay, so actually let me run to here. Um, we've got, we were changing from, whoa, oh yeah, I moved it to the bottom. Um, I think that happened offline. Um, I changed the, the, the default size and moved the um, prev next to the bottom uh, and did a little changing to the layout. So um, we have uh, this interface where we put in the name of an organization and it gives us a paginated display of the archive of, of the repositories in that art organization um, and we can page through them um, and when we get to the end and I, I was able to fairly easily do sort of what page you were on and what out of how many pages so you'd have some idea what that would look like and then you can say review and submit and we go to this interface which needs a little attention but is the, the right basic idea. Um, and it, it occurred to me after, I think, our last meeting, somewhere offline, um, that uh, 
there is an issue here in that at the moment if we go here we get these guys if we go back we actually re download i think so that's an interesting question to make sure of I want to put a print statement in somewhere to make 100% sure that I'm right about that. But I think we re-download this whole thing from GitHub, even though it was already there. Um, uh, unless somehow you caches things, but I don't know why or how. Yeah, so that, that loading pause there, I'm pretty sure that's another HTTP request. So even though we've already seen page two, um, I think we just went and got it again. And that doesn't seem great. <clears throat> and so I think that's a, th and that was true before we went to the prev next thing. It's just that having the prev next thing got me thinking about this. And um, I realized that we, I think were um, doing multiple loads of the same page. Um, and that doesn't seem to be a good thing. Um, I'm sure GitHub would prefer we didn't do it. They don't really want us hitting their servers unnecessarily. Um, it also raises a somewhat odd question, which I hadn't thought about before, which I think we, unless somebody out there's got a cool answer for it, I don't have a cool answer for it. Um, I think that we we'll just may have to live with it. But the issue is um, the organization could change while we're in the archiving process. So it's possible that I start out looking at page one, for example, and uh, so I'm looking at page one and I'm thinking, and it takes me a while because there's a lot, of, you know, right now I've got the default, which is 30 repository. So I'm thinking and I'm thinking and I'm thinking. Um, and then I go over here and I spend some time thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. And, thinking. and then I come to review and submit and any number of things could have possibly happened in that time somebody could add a repository that's probably the least weird thing because we just wouldn't know it was there and we wouldn't then try to do something to it somebody could archive a repository that was not previously archived if that were to happen and we were to then send a request to archive it i assume that will fail in some way hopefully it will fail in a way that will inform us that it was previously archived and we can just quietly ignore that fact i guess it's probably the best thing to do um pro, pro the other thing that could possibly happen i guess is somebody could delete an archive altogether i mean a, a repo altogether and again then hopefully the request to archive that repository would fail but with some kind of message indicating, well, I bet you get a 404 or some kind of not found, um, which would be a little weird. Um, so there's going to need to be some error checking. I mean, realistically, I don't think these things are super likely to happen, but they could. Um, and I think that one thing I need to do is... Uh, before we get to actually authenticating and sending actual archive requests, um, probably need to make a little dummy repository um, with a, a dummy organization with a set of you know dummy repositories, not too many, that I can by hand archive and unarchive and then we can try some of these things so I can get into this, flip over to that organization, delete a repository, and then find out what happens. Um, 
or archive a repository and find out what happens. Um, uh, so I think that would be useful. I'm not going to do that today, but I think that would be a thing to do. But it, but today the thing I want to think about is this problem of reloading pages. Like that, I think, is a reload. And I think we've gone back to GitHub and we have gotten the page again. And I don't think that's really what we want. Um, and I think there'll be a delay here. Yeah, and I think that means we're going back to GitHub. I don't think we want to do that. So I think that we're going to want to think about our um, uh, data structures some. And right now, the archive state map maps from the ID to a pair, which is the repository object. So the full repository object with all the bits and pieces. Um, do we, where is that? That's probably right there. So the ID, the name, the description, it's archive state and it's updated information. Um, and archive state, which we cr created, I don't think last week, maybe the week before, but recently, um, uh, that is either we're going to skip it. We want to archive. Oh, we, we chose to skip it in the pagination view. We chose to archive it or we skipped it in review after having chosen to archive it. We changed our mind in review. Um, so one way we could solve this problem is we could add the page number to this tuple. So we could say that we're going to map from an ID to a repository, a page number and an archive state. And then if we go back to, um, well, is that going to make a lot of sense? Cause we, we basically want something that tells us if we have been to a page or not. Um, so maybe what we actually want is a map of page numbers to um, lists of IDs that would be the archives for that ID. Um, I mean, the repositories associated with those ID IDs. Because then you could populate that pretty easily and it would be easy to look up. So if you find yourself on page five and you want to know, have I been here before? You just look that up in the map and it's either not there, in which case you have to do the request and populate everything, or it is there, in which case you have loaded that page from GitHub before and you just use that set of um, uh, repository IDs. Maybe that actually makes more sense. I was somehow thinking that the page number would go in here, but that you really can't key off of that easily. You'd end up filtering um, weirdly. And it's a little tricky to know, like, have you been to page five? Well, you'd have to search this map for any instance that has a five, page five, in it and that doesn't seem like a great idea so maybe we do want another um map that maps from page numbers to ids um and then we can basically have two levels of indirection uh to get from the page number to the actual set of repositories hmm so thoughts out in the world, or should we just press on with that? I think we'll press on with that. So I'm going to want, hmm, where do I want to put this? Um, Does desired archive state get used anymore? I think it does, but I don't actually know. Um, 
Yes, apparently it does. Quite a lot. Okay. Good to know. Um, so I think I'll put that down here. So we want to struct. Do I need a struct? Um, well, I don't probably technically need one, but it would be good to have a name. And then I can impl things on it, which might also be nice. Um, so struct, um, uh, page repo map, um, Let's not make it pub. Let's just make it map um, hash map uh, u size u size. So the key will be the page number and the value. Oops, that should be a back of u size. Um, will be a vector of repository IDs. Um, and I don't know, I feel like this has bugged me all along and maybe this is just now the sign that it, something needs to be done about it. Um, I feel like having U size here as the ID isn't very readable and it would be nice to have a name. So type repo ID equals u size. And now I can start replacing relevant u sizes with repo IDs. Um, It's going to be a repo and that this is nice because it makes this type all named types there's no um uh unnamed types anywhere um which makes me happy um now the trick is there's a lot of u sizes floating around um and they're all over the place um throughout the project and I don't think the compiler is going to complain. Um, that, that's a repo ID. And actually to keep type page number is you size. And then I can actually put page number here. And then I don't really need this comment. Ha ha. And having things in the code instead of in the comments is always good. Um, so, yeah. So now those are the only two U sizes. Um, I presume there'll be vast oceans of U sizes elsewhere that I'm going to have to deal with. Uh, so I probably want to put a to-do here to do replace the various uses of u size to indicate a repository ID with the new repo ID type. Okay. So I think that does a thing. So coming back down to here, so then that's going to be a map of page numbers to repository IDs. So we can impl um, re page repo map. Um, we can have a pub fun get. Um, oh, um, we probably want to like uh, have page. Um, 
let's see is it half page is that what I want um, Bull. So we're have we seen this page? Um, so maybe it's have seen page. So if blah dot have seen page has seen page, I think is better. If that thing has seen page, oh, and I guess we need a page number page um, and so we want to return um, self dot map dot contains key page number Why are you shouty? Oh, it wants a reference. Really? So contain key takes a reference to a key type. And that makes sense if you want, if you had a more complex key type, since you're just reading it and not changing it, you don't really need to take ownership of it. So it makes sense that you want to uh, borrow it, not um, have it move into that thing. So um, we have that. We want to get the repos for a page. Get repos, self, page number, page number, back uh, now once we've seen a page the vec the repositories on that page shouldn't ever change so I think we ought to be able to retain ownership of them in the map and not have to clone them so we want to return a reference repo id um so self map get return to reference the value corresponding to the key so just page number Oh, yeah. Now, this is going to assume, because uh, we have an un unwrap, don't we? Because that returns an option. So, get repos. Oh. Maybe it would make sense to actually return an option here. And then instead of has seen page we would just ask for the page and if the page comes up none then or I, I bet there's a um, I bet there's a map thing that probably puts a default value in wah, wah, wah. rust hash map let's see get Trying to slice, then you probably use unwrapper default. Oh, but I I need the the. Um, yeah, I mean, really, what I want is if it's not there. I want the system to go out and get it and then it becomes there. But it probably doesn't make sense to have that happen here. I don't know that we want this code 
to be calling the HTTP code So I think maybe having this return none and then, because I think that one of the things that I want to do is have the HTTP code move into some kind of service. Right now, most of it is sitting in Paginator, which it doesn't belong there at all. Um, and if the service could would call get repos, and if the result is none, then we could use some kind, one of those or else things on um, options to call a service to say, hey, or call some other code in the service to say, hey, download this page, update all the state things that need to be updated and return the relevant page element. I think that might be a reasonable way to do this. So maybe I'll just make this return a, an option. Option. And then we'll sort of, that pushes the lump a little bit. Um, and then we are going to want to add a page. It's going to be a page number and a vec of repo ID. And we want to actually, I guess I need types here, don't I? Page. Wow. I got the variable name with no type, and then I got the type with no variable name. Um, uh, repo IDs. And here we do want to take ownership because we're going to put it in the map and we want the map to hold it. So passing in ownership here actually makes sense. Um, and that doesn't return anything. And it's insert. No. Add. No. What is the hash map to put something in. Is it entry? No. Get insert. It is insert. Okay. Takes key and value and returns option V, which was the old one. Hmm. Insert page number repo ID. Now, should we check that it's not already there? Oh, got a shouty thing. Uh, oh, because this is not mute. And mute, because we're going to modify the, um, well, that didn't solve the problem. It needed to happen. Uh, we need to undo the reference. Is this like a star thing? Oh, apparently. No, apparently not. Oh, I, I, I've just got to get the map. I'm being such a doofus map yeah hello earth to moon now yeah okay that's going to be okay um and i do need the mute because this modifies oops the i don't need the mute Thank you, Agafa. Yeah, I do need the mute. Okay. Whew. I was like, really? Um, yeah. So I do need the mute. <sighs> and we probably want to check 
we really don't ever want to add a page if we've already got one. So I think adding an assertion, assert bang self dot has seen page, page number, oops, ah, that was right. Don't make it go away on me, dot not. Do I want to do that or do I just want to use a bang? Ah. Um, there it sort of reads odd to me. I think I'm going to put the bang here. So we'll assert that it's not seen that page before and um, we will then insert, assuming it hasn't, we will insert the new information. Okay, so I think that gives us a reasonable little data structure. And now we need to set up the initial, oh, and I guess we're gonna need a new on this, probably. Uh, page repo map map hash map new okay and now we ought to be able to go to is it main where we set up the state um, we set up organization here. Where do we set up the archive state map? Is that in here? No, it is not. Where does that get set up? Um, archive state map. Let's see. Um, wait, oh, stop it. I want to repository list. Bet it gets first. Built here. Maybe? Oh, I guess actually it doesn't really ever get built. I'm confusing context, which we played with for a hot second, um, and uh, Udux. Udux, you just call U store somewhere, and if it didn't exist, it does now which means I think we have to implement the default trait so that it knows how to build a, um, so we didn't really need new, we just needed to implement default, I think. And I can just refer to the state when I need it. And it doesn't have to be set up anywhere. Okay. Scoot you back. So, in fact, I think, I think I probably don't need the new, but I do need, um, uh, what's that syntax look like? Derive, uh, default. Probably gonna need to derive a bunch of other stuff too, but I need to derive default. <coughs> um, and then when I do you store somewhere it will just be like woo we'll make a new one if one doesn't exist so in the paginator we're going to need to have that um, thing 
So we're going to need to have lat um, page map and page map. Ooh, I didn't get page page map dispatch. Use store uh, page. What did I call it? Uh, page repo map. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Repo map. Now that's going to fail on a whole host of fronts. Um, we need to. Oh! Page repo map is uh, not a public struct. So that's a problem. And it's not going to be imported. Uh, it's also not going to implement a whole bunch of traits it needs to implement. I think there's going to be a whole bunch of noise here. Um, so we need uduck store store for this to work. Uh, default store. La, 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 la. Oop, nope, not happy. Um, so presumably I need a partial eek or an eek or something. But, um, So here we've got partial eek and eek. If it just wanted uh, not equal, eek would seem to do it. Um, but it wants partial eek. Okay. Now that all compiles, it looks like. And this compiles. Cool. Um, now, <clears throat> um, okay, let's down here so this is the paginator so we display the repositories and we have on checkbox change so repositories is going to be where the action is so where is that right there oh so that's the state of this page so we have the repositories as part of the state and in fact the repositories is now going to be in the page state map and really all we need is the current page from the current page we could always get the list of repositories or at least the list of repository IDs and maybe that would be make more sense because I think we end up cloning do we end up cloning repositories no we just pass it um, oh no but we clone we deref the paginator state and clone it. So we do end up making a clone of this vector. And that clones all the contained repositories. And if we're going to clone a vector, cloning a vector of IDs is probably better than cloning a vector. Oh, actually, we, we wouldn't even have to clone anything. We just clone the U size and then we look up the repository list. Um, so I think this actually we can avoid a lot of this copying 
by using the state to map from the current page to the repository list of IDs and then get a list of repositories themselves. And actually, I wonder if we want over here, we could have a get, so this is actually a get repo IDs. It's probably a better name. We could write a pub, whoa, what happened there? Pub fun get repos. It would take self and page number, page number, and return an option reference to a vac of repository um hmm is that going to make sense we're going to have to make the vector cuz the vector doesn't exist so I don't think we can return a reference to the vector, but we could return a, ref, a vector of references to repositories to avoid duplicating all the repositories. Oh, I'm sorry, Sitsu, you asked a question a while ago, and I don't, I've now lost track of the how would that work. Um, I don't know what that refers to, because um, I'm not sure when you posted the comment. Um, Um, so I was thinking actually here, we would actually use the store to get the archive state map, which goes from IDs to repositories and their state. And we would then use that to generate a list of repositories. Um, uh, it's a little icky because it does require that we access the store. And if, if we think of this as being mostly model kind of stuff, accessing the store seems maybe gross. Um, oh, you're probably right. I bet we have no access to the store out here out in, in non-component land. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be an issue. And the other option is we could pass in the archive state map as an argument. But if we're going to do that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put that here, I don't think. So let's actually... Let's not do this. Let's not go down this road quite yet. Uh, <coughs> let's see if there's a place where it makes sense. And then we can think about what we know at that point and how we would construct the thing that we need. But I think that back here, we could get rid of this repositories, VEC repository as part of the state. And now cloning this is a real no-brainer because we're just cloning a pair of U sizes. Um, and so we're gonna have to find the state that's up here. Um, and actually that would make this to-do go away. Boom. Um, and this is gonna break all kinds of things. We gotta find all the things that it broke. So the state here won't have this empty vector of repositories. And um, uh, 228, oh, lots of things. Um, this won't have that. And uh, 
this won't have that. And okay, so this is just not even going to have this anymore. So we're going to have to get the current. So this is going to need to be like page map dot get repo IDs current page. And then we're going to have to change repository list to take a vector of IDs and not, oh yeah, repositories, oh it would be equal. So that's going to, the types will fail there because this is going to be the wrong kind of vector. Yeah. So we've got vec repository and get repo IDs returns an option of a vec repo ID. Right. So we're going to have to, so actually this probably ought to succeed. Like I don't think we want this to return none. Um, and then the question is would um, hello, composite gen, um, and Wagafa made a face. Um, uh, yeah, um, if we pass a none into repository list, none should, when would none happen? None would happen if we haven't gotten the page yet and that shouldn't happen here oh actually no it would um if we first call this and we don't have the um we haven't loaded the page yet then that would be none um, and then we would display the empty repo list message, um, in that case. Now, one thing that this just made me think about that could be a problem is if the state only depends on current page and last page, we can't tell if we've in fact loaded the repos for this page and if we haven't yet well when we do because the state doesn't change we don't oh, but that only depends on the organization of the current page oh but it, this it also depends implicitly on the state so I think we do need probably at least a Boolean here to indicate if this is loaded or not. Um, and then switch from false to true as a way of forcing the page to redraw. Otherwise, I don't think the page will ever redraw. So I think this is going to need actually a... Um, loaded and we have to come back up here where state there it is loaded boolean <coughs> that's going to break all kinds of things oh it's just bool <coughs> um 
now all those places where I was updating things, I'm gonna have to fix stuff. Um, so here we're making a button callback. We're setting it, so we're moving to a new state. Mm. And so we actually need loaded to be page map. <coughs> uh, is that what I called it? Oh, um, this function doesn't have access to the state that I loaded up. Uh, so we're actually going to have to pass page map to make button state. Looks like it. Why do we pass this repository paginator? Oh, because we're setting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to have to have a pass a page map which is of type page repo map here and actually it's a reference would be enough because we're just going to look something up page map dot has seen page um, page number oops yeah so that's going to say, if, if we've seen this page, then loaded will be true. If we have not seen this page, loaded will be false, which seems to be a reasonable thing to do. And then down to here. And I think I should get rid of this comment because we just went with something else anyway. Now here, we're setting this state to be, what? Where, what is this happening in? Update state for organization. Ah, so this is, we've gone and actually loaded the page. So loaded should be true here. And then this we haven't um, this is when we first set everything up so the initial state is going to be with loaded false and make button call back is going to need to ha pass in the page map. And I think I put that in the third location, page number, state, and page map. Yes. Um, so page map. And it's not happy because I need to put an ampersand because I'm loaning it because I don't need to do anything fancy. And this also needs an end page map. Cool. And this is grumpy because it's just returning the wrong type for what we expect from repository list. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, so we've got to go into repository list now and change what it's expecting. Um, and actually, I might just change this name, repo IDs. Um, and then that will... Um, 
this is going to be repo IDs, and this is going to be a back of repository ID, which it doesn't know about because we need to import it. Is that just wrong? Uh, what have I done? Did I call it? Oh, I called it repo ID. Well, it's a problem of shorthands. Is then you forget that you shorthanded or you sh did a shortcut, and then everything doesn't work. Um, repo ID. Okay. So, um, uh, doesn't, oh, it's private, of course. That's helpful. Um, pub type repo ID. And we are all super grumpy here. Oh, that's because this needs to be repo IDs. Okay, and now that part's happy. And then this is going to be repo IDs. And. Oh, in fact, actually, though, this is still wrong because paginator is passing in get repo IDs, which is an option still. So this is going to get an option, not, uh, so this is going to option, and is it, so it's actually an option that holds a reference to a back, so it's going to be that thing. And now we have a lifetime problem? Yes. So the, the repo IDs vector has to live as long as the props or vice versa, depending on how you want to think about it. Ah, you, Y-E-W-U, you, curse you. Um, yeah, we can't have lifetimes on properties yet. I think the next version is supposed to allow that, but we're not, I'm not, I'm not willing to just go off of, basically, because I'm a coward. Um, <coughs> um, so we cannot, I think, put lifetimes on the properties which means we can't have a reference to a vector there. We're going to have to actually have a vector. Well, that is a whole lot of annoying. Because that does mean we're going to have to clone somewhere. So back out that. That's going to need to be a vector. Um, and repositories, that means that's going to have to be an option around an actual vector. Which means we're going to have to clone inside the option, which we can do with and. Oh, actually, I meant to say. Um, but maybe two owned. Can we do that inside a? Will that work through a? Um, it 
inside an option? Doesn't seem to like it. Expected. But got. Okay, so that did not undo the referency part. Um, so. And returns none if it was none, otherwise returns the option, but I don't want that. I want to and then. Um, or would something like as DREF? Um, no, that clearly did not work. And as ref goes the other way and clone cloned ah bingo that's exactly what i wanted thank you didn't know it existed but that solved my problem well done thank you thank you thank you <coughs> um so that returns now a vector um uh yeah, option and result clearly have like a whole lot of little magic toys for manipulating their internals. And and I've reached a point where I tend to assume there is going to be something that will do the thing I want. But I often don't know what it is. And then it's a race between, you know, one of you two telling me um, or me figuring it out um, uh, through googling or just you know pattern uh vs code suggestions um but cloned was exactly what i was looking for well done um so now this is gonna be okay so that's now a vac this is gonna be uh now because this is an option we don't check, probably don't need to check for empty list anymore um, because we shouldn't ever have an empty list of repositories once it is loaded. So it should actually be the none or some variants here. Um, Actually, this probably becomes an if let, if let, um, repo IDs equals some, no, it's going to be some repo IDs equals repo IDs, then then we're going to have this business here. This will be repo IDs. And then I'll have to figure that out in a second. Else, now we'd have the case and we would just have the empty repo list message that's actually pretty slick I like that I may like that better than what we had before um, now we got a gonna have to turn so each of these repo IDs we're gonna have to get an actual repository out of it so we're gonna have to have the oh, we've got the archive state map and it can turn a repo ID into a repository I wonder if we actually have a method for that because maybe we should if we don't um, impl archive state map from paginator state from review state um, 
oh it's ar archive state map I care about with repos get desired state update desired state get repos to review get no we don't have something let's actually add um, pub fun get repo self um, repo ID is repo ID and we're going to return <coughs> a can I get away with returning a reference to a repository I don't know if that's going to work It'd be nice if it would self map uh, dot get repo ID uh, and the BT the the B tree where did you go? It's <coughs> archive state. Oh here's archive state map. So the repository is the first part of the tuple, so dot zero. I really should turn that tuple into a struct because, yeah, going by position is just not smart. Um, not happy, no field. Oh, because it's an option. Oh. <sighs> Do I want... To return an option here. Yeah, probably, because we could send in all kinds of weird things. Um, as IDs. And now we're going to have to do one of these. Oh, that's really gross. Um, so uh, dot and we need a closure and then <coughs> um, p p dot zero boom and you're not happy why are you not happy um, expected option. Oh, and then no, it, t it returns an option. So it's expecting, oh, yeah, no, right, map would be better. Yes, because I'm mapping what I have to what I want. And now it's all shouty. Um, because I'm getting a repository instead of a reference. Because our data structure actually holds the references, so I want that. Yes, bingo. <coughs> um, so I'm going to return a reference to the repository, and I'm going to hope that that is going to be useful here. So we're mapping an iterator over the IDs, and then we're mapping this <coughs> um, across that. How is this? Oh, I wrote, I actually typed that. And that's actually now not a repository. This is a repo ID. 
um, because this is repo ID, so that's a repo ID. So I'm going to need to, well, I could put another map before this to convert these to repo IDs. Do filter map then map? Oh, and filter map will take out all the nuns because I've got all those options. Aha. Uh -huh. Although I guess the question is, if I have a nun here, what do I want to do with it? If I had a repo ID and it wasn't in the uh, list of repositories, I feel like that ought to be an error. That ought to like yell at me, not just quietly disappear. And filter map will just quietly take those out. And I don't know that that's really what I want. I think I really want to like go boom, um, which is where I want to go boom back here. Is this really the thing that if this isn't what I want, that I should just go splat here? Because if I ever call get repo with an ID that isn't in the... Um, archive state map, I really probably want that to be a programmer error and fail, I think. So I think I want an expect, maybe I, I really just want an expect or something here and have this just return the reference to the repository. And then I don't have to worry about the option part elsewhere. Um, so I could actually assert bang, uh, self dot map dot contains key repo ID, um, ampersand repo ID and a message, um, uh, repository key blah, blah, not found in archive state map uh, and then this needs to be like a format bang or something right um, and then this is going to be repo ID. Well, I guess because it was just a name, you could have just done repo ID here. Um, oh, not happy. Uh, maybe it's a string little format. Oh. Uh. No, that did not make anything better. So do I just need this to not be here? So let me look at assert. Rust assert bang. So I think I'm just using the wrong tools probably. Uh, custom message. Oh, I don't need the format bang. It already has that cooked in. Oh. Oh, and is it who got there? for me. Um, 
already. So that part's now happy. Now can I actually just put repo ID in here? And I do. Okay. Whew. Thank you. Got there eventually. So then I'm just going to say unwrap here. And now this is going to become a reference to a repository. And now back to repository list. This is going to be a repo ID. And uh, I ought to um, I could just do it all in here. Oh, actually, this is interesting. This is really just the repo ID here. Oh, that's interesting. So I need... Oh. So this needs the ID, and this needs the whole repository. So maybe I just want to like get, so this becomes repo ID here. And this we want to get, so archive state map dot map. Well, no, we have, we just made a thing, get repo um from the repo id and we probably have to clone this here because we can't have lifetimes in components um and that probably needs to be oh so we do need to start that. Okay. And that would probably need to start this here, too. Which is not a big deal. Okay. zippity doo da. <coughs> so I think that takes care of that problem. Um, oh, interesting. We don't actually refer to repository anymore. Directly. Oh, and this to do is a reminder. I'd forgotten. I was going to actually maybe start with this today, and I got wrapped up in other things in my head. So they, in the documentation for you, they recommend using adder value instead of string inside properties and states um, because they end up cl because there's no lifetime stuff, they end up cloning properties. And cloning strings can be expensive. And an adder value is a view data structure. There's basically a reference count around a string. And so the cloning's a lot cheaper. Um, so they recommend using adder value instead of string. And there are a few places, there aren't a lot actually, but there are a few places where we use strings. And so we could potentially um do this adder value thing um and this then makes me wonder if you know rcs of things like repos would make more sense than just having cloning of of full repo objects like we did right here but not not dealing with that right now um so what else doesn't compile things in review and submit don't compile um, uh, so this, yeah, we're passing 
repositories instead of repository IDs into repository list. Um, and this, oh, interesting. So here, this is now supposed to be a, oh, it's not supposed to be an option anymore. Oh, no, it is an option. Yeah, because we do the if let. So an option of vec of repo IDs. And how are we passing that in here? We are passing, we're calling get repo IDs on the page map. And, and here we're calling get owned repos to review. Go to definition, what does this do? So it calls get repos to review, which returned an iterator over references to repositories and cloned on an iterator turns the references into an into clones and then we get a vector of repositories um, And we need to pass, so things have changed. So we now need to pass in a <coughs> vec, an option wrapping a vec of repo IDs. So we could change this to convert this iterator over repositories to a vec of repo IDs. Uh, what? So this is getting iterated. Oh, we're iterating over all the entries in the map and we're filtering them. So that could come out as an empty iterator as distinct from some or none. Yeah, so review and submit, we wouldn't expect none to ever happen here because none is there if we have not loaded that uh, list of repos or that page of repositories yet. And when we get to review and submit, we've all we've sort of promised that we've loaded everything. Um, and so, uh, oh, interesting. Thinking about it. You know, really, maybe we shouldn't be able to go forward. The next button shouldn't be enabled unless we have actually loaded the page. Um, where does the, the button gets built? So, yeah, it does build the button even if we haven't loaded the page. So we might want, I'm going to make it to do, we probably want to deactivate the next button if we're still in the unloaded state. Arr! Because we really don't want to be able to move forward. Because you get like if somehow the network was really slow, you could 
go to a page, not have it load, see the next button, hit it, even though it was saying loading, which wouldn't be very smart of you, but you could do it. And then you would just jump forward to the next page and we would skip a page that way. Now don't think that's really a good idea. So we probably do want to deactivate the next button if we're still in the unloaded state. Not solving that problem right now, but I think that's a thing that ought to be done. So here we'll assume that this is never none. Um, it's going to be a vector. It might be empty because we uh, unchecked everything, but it's not going to be none. And so we really want this iterator. We want a pub fun get <coughs> um, uh, repo okay we really just want the IDs <coughs> hmm. boy it almost makes me feel like there should be two separate types here, but yeah. Um, so it, just, it, 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 it seems weird. So I liked having two, having a repository list as its own component. We would pass a set of repositories in, but now it's a little weird because when we call it from repository paginator, the world is different than when we call it from review and submit. And I feel like that difference ought to be captured in the type system somehow and that we're kind of getting around it um, or doing extra work to move from one kind of thing to another kind of thing. But I don't know. I think maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, repo IDs to review self um, back re repo ID and so we're gonna have self dot get repos to review dot map r r dot ID I think that just will do it. Nope. Not happy. Uh... Oh, I got to collect. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. Um, so that should give us this. And now review and submit. I think we just call this instead. And we could probably change that to repo. I think we have to change that to repo IDs because we changed the name. Okay. So that's happy. Now, there is a lifetime problem on repository paginator. Um, on line 89. right here everything's sad um uh wow so what's the thing borrowed data escapes out a function page map escapes the function body here page map is a reference that's only valid in the function pot body um Borrowed data escapes outside of the function. So the so we're passing in a reference to the page map here, but this escapes out because we call things. And that's I think what gets us into trouble. Uh, K 
can we just evaluate this before the callback and let the boolean pass in um let loaded equal page map has seen page page number and then we just put loaded here aha i think that may have worked and so we'll call this and then that boolean gets copied in <coughs> and that's fine because it's just a boolean and copying it around doesn't cause us any problems zippity doo da. okay um now at the moment we never actually use loaded in the um so we've got our state here with loaded we set it but we apparently never use it um oh no actually it's 187 it says that we're not using it Blur? Oh, we never use it later on. You know, is that a good thing? Um, or is that a sign of a problem? So I feel like, I feel like this is going to need to depend on loaded. Uh, and then, but let's actually, so everything compiles, right? Um, so let's actually see, see if anything works. Boom. <laughs> That's not a good sign. So I think the state probably does depend on loading and or loaded and so we need this to depend on loaded so that when loaded changes it um, redraws things. Oh, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. CSX07. Um, and why are we grumpy here? Uh, oh, because I don't need to say bool. I was confusing when, and then update state for organization. Does that need loaded? Probably not. Um, because loaded should always just go from false to true. Well, oh no, because this could, the organization could change and loaded would then be false, I think. So maybe we do need to pass that in. Um, We'll say loaded, we'll pass that as an argument. And then that's going to break this, go to definition. Um, oh, I guess I need bool here because this is a uh, function definition. And so here, Okay, so we spawn this local. So really we don't ever use that because this update goes out and gets the repos for this page and sets the state. And so loaded will always be true here 
And so this is presumably never getting referred to. Well, this name appears, but this value is never being used. So actually, I think, well, sorry about all the scrolling. I think we're going to actually get rid of this and go back to where things were broken, which is line 198, uh, and not pass in loaded here. So I don't think we need to pass that in around. And then this probably is just an underscore. Okay. And now do we all compile? Do 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 you can compile a little computer. And now we'll say UMM Seaside 3601 S20 go. No curses. Still definitely have issues. JavaScript console, what is going on? Hello. Uh, let's actually nuke you and reload. Um. Woo. That thing's big. Say, oh, that's because I'm loading up 30. Um, I'm loading up the default, which is 30. Um, so we do have a big archive state map. But we are not. We do not appear to be. Um, displaying them. So the current oh, loaded, yeah, that makes some sense. If we come back here, mm -hmm. so loaded is true. That seems reasonable because we are loaded, but why did we not draw? Hmm. So reposit the new repo state was current page one, last page two, loaded true. So it was called that organization in this state, but it didn't seem to draw anything. So let us, do we have any things in repository list? Do, 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 We do not. Let us add. Um, so let's do this. Um, uh, was it log? We found a better. Is log. And there, right, yeah, right here. We're using glue console log. And we had log bang. Okay. And this took format. We're in repo list with repo IDs. Actually, I probably could put that right in there, couldn't I? Repo IDs. And I think that should tell us what we need to know. Oh, and it's format bang. La 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 bang. 
and we probably have to import something come on let me grab it import log glue console log and now let it recompile and come to here UMM Seaside 3601S20 boom Ooh, we're in repo list with none that is not a good sign so we're in repo list with none we're in repo list with none and none so it's like it's redoing the paginator but the paginator is always sending none in as the value so where does the paginator send? Okay. So repo IDs is get repo IDs from the current page. Oh, so page map isn't, oh yeah, we created page map, but we've never actually put anything there. Um, so when we get the list of repositories for a page and that happens in here we don't actually put it in the page map and so the page map always thinks that there's never that there's nothing anywhere so we need <clears throat> as part of this and boy this really needs to move out into a service um, but here's the list of the vector of repositories and that needs to be put in the page map so we need the um, page map dispatch, right? Why are you not auto completing for me? Oh, uh, we have to send that in because we're going to update it. Yeah. Um, page map dispatch dispatch archive state no it's not archive state map it's page um repo page map no page page repo map boom we have to pass that in and once we have that we can use that here um, repo no page map dispatch reduce mute repo no page map And we're going to want to add an entry to page map dot insert current page. And we want a vector of uh, repo IDs, which we can get out of this vector of repositories. Um, uh, repos result dot map r r dot id boom boom not happy oh because it's a reference so I think we need to deref or star or something no, didn't like that. Oh, we'd have to add the trait. Well, here, let's just, I want to make sure I'm in the right neighborhood.
where I add a bunch of things. Okay, so that fixed that problem. So we could um, dot dref, and now page for this to work. Um, we have to pull that in. I've got a no comment from Isitsu. So I think DREF was not the right thing to do. Oh yeah, because that still gives us a reference. Uh, that didn't do what I wanted at all, did it? Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see page map dot map. So this is... Uh, and now I bet... Oh, it's private. Do I have a... I bet I made a thing for that. I bet... I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. I bet I made a... Add page. I did. So I really wanted to use add page. Okay. So I should remember what I told myself I would build. Um... And now this is grumpy because repo's result isn't an iterator, it's a vector. So we have to say iter on that. Whoa, and now we're, oh, we need to collect dot collect. And now reduce map, reduce me. Why are we unhappy? Oh, clone is not satisfied on repo page map, but it's required. Oh, fine, 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 fine. Repo page map needs to have clone. And now all of that finally works. But this got really kind of long. Um, what if we put you, let's do that. Okay, I think we'll leave that alone. And so that should add it to the page map. And now we have a problem on line 206 in that I think we're not passing something in that we now need. Yes. So we pass in the archive state dispatch, but we don't pass in the page map dispatch. And I'm going to put you down as well. Oh, and I guess all of you really ought to be um, moved over. Um, now, does everybody compile, please? Work? I think it compiles. There's some linting that I'll have to deal with in another life, but wow, we're nearly to noon. I always think, oh, this will just take a few minutes. And then an, two hours later, here we are. Although I kind of figured this would take a little while. But, oh, well, blew up the world. Panicked. Um, so we're in repo list with a bunch of IDs. That's good. Um, repository key, blah, 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 not found in archive state map. Um... You know, I wonder if, now that I think about it, 
in paginator where were we right uh where was the heavy lifting going on uh here i wonder if we need to make sure we change archive state map first before we do this because this does depend on archive state map and the uh, state map does not depend on the page map. Uh, and so if things got handled out of order, um, then we'd be in trouble. Okay, and so there's a question, is it including the already archived ones? Um, Hmm. Huh. Yeah, probably. Because this is going to be everything we got back from GitHub. And we are putting all of that in the page map. So that's everything, regardless of what its state was on GitHub and what we have chosen to do with it. And so if But we should only look up things that we care about. So if there's extras in here, no, maybe that is a problem. Let, let's actually see if my changing the order did anything. And if it didn't, then we definitely need to think about was it is it Sue's question? Um, because that could be a major concern. Well, we still blow up. Um, ooh, we blow up twice. That's interesting. So, Repo list with none, yada, yada, yada. Repo list with none, yada, yada, yada. Repo list with none, yada, yada, yada. In the repo list, here's a list of repositories. Panicked at key 236, uh, etc. Um, now, can I find that and we can figure out if there's something special about that guy. Um, no. So it isn't being printed out in the, so it's not showing up here. That's weird. And you said you looked it up and we are putting everything in the archive state map, which makes sense because we do display them in the, in this phase here, they're displayed and they're just grayed out. So why is, oh, this is also failing. <coughs> So current page is one, and we're saying that we have not seen that page. Huh. So that's line 169. What's going on there? Uh, boom. So we're saying that there is no key for page number one, but we're calling, oh, add page. 
totally wouldn't have seen the page number yet. Oh, but it says not has seen page. So it's saying we're calling add page when we've already seen the page? Blar? Blar? That seems bad. Um, so we have that we can't find stuff. And then we have that we have seen pages that we wouldn't have expected to have seen. Well, that's very confusing. Huh. Are we going to solve this in five minutes? My guess is no, because it smells like it's a bigger problem than... I'm curious, just as a piece of information, what happens if I comment that assertion out? So we get the same, couldn't find that repository, but then we do still get some unreachable code. I don't know if that's because of the previous, whoa, no, I didn't really want to do that. Um, the previous issue or not. Um, but it didn't fi fix anything. So I see we come back to that because I think that still should probably be um, checked. Huh. So where, oops, I want this. Oh, I guess I do want this now because I want to, okay. Um, CSI 3601S20. Okay. So I care, I'm going to care about this one. So this repository is not found. And we're in line 122 of repository and ice repos, get repo, uh, and ice repos, repository, uh, so we're calling the compository, repository list component, where do we next see us? more repository list component. Paginator. So paginator is calling repository list component. Repository list component is calling uh, get repo on archive statement. <clears throat> wada, 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 wada. Um, repository list components over here. What do we call get repo? Right here. So the archive state map, which we're getting from Udux, we're calling get repo on an ID that we have been passed by the paginator. So the paginator is passing in a list here. Oops, ah, here that contains an ID 
that when we look it up in the archive state map, it goes boom. Maybe we should print um, repo IDs and state uh, archive state map. Archive state map. And if this doesn't turn up something, I think we'll call it quits, which is a bummer because we won't come back to this for a while. And it's always sad to leave things in a dangly state, but sometimes that's what happens. Okay. So we got this repo list and we have this archive state map and two, three, two, four, four is right here. Okay. And the question is, is it in this list somewhere? Let's go see if we can find it. The answer appears to be no. Really, why? That is very confusing. It's like somehow... Show the code. So this is, I think, just the first load. We could change it so it only loads like three on a page to make that easier to see. Um, and you could show the code where the repos are added to the map. Um, I assume you mean the archive state map. And that... Where is... What do we call HTTP stuff? I think I'm up too high. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, yeah. Is this right? No, this is too low. Where is... Oh, here we are. Yeah. So we make the request. We compute the last page. We unwrap the... to the archive state map we get the new state which is the local state and set it and then oh you know I wonder if having this after this is a problem because when we set the state it probably tries to redraw and maybe we haven't added this stuff yet so i wonder if i moved it too far down i wonder if it needs to be here so that we update the archive state map then we update the page map then we update the state which causes a redraw to happen um and with repos here, uh, is something I defined that um, oh, it only adds things. So you are right, is it, Sue? This only puts things in the archive state map if they're not already filtered. 
interesting. And that would explain why that one shows up as missing. So I'm going to actually need since I'm not passing the list in I'm going to actually need to keep these here if I'm going to use this to get things out of the list of repositories or only display yeah i mean i so where we um so here we're looking up get repo um so this list of ids that were passed in could we could have filtered those out first, which means that repository paginator, it passes that list in page map, get repo IDs, current page. So they're all getting added to the page. So where I do that, which is that's up here. So this add page probably needs to filter out things um, that are um, oops, go away. Um, So I wonder if what we actually want is, and boy, we're not doing this right now because I do need to wrap up here. I wonder if what, what we actually want is for uh, archive state to have an already archived option and that we use that so we can still keep the the repos in all our data structures because we do want them to show up in places but we can have them marked as hey this was already archived don't give us check boxes don't give us anything um and then they can exist in the system instead of being quietly filtered out in one place um uh, I think that makes more sense, actually. So I think this is a to-do, and this needs to be what we come back to first thing next time. Add an already archived option here and keep all the repositories in all the maps um, regardless of whether they were archived in advance. Okay, so that needs to be, I think, what we start with is adding that option and then working our way through and making sure that we add everybody, but we add them with the appropriate um, uh, state. And so I think that means that the um, with repos, that this, um, we would have an else that adds it with an already archived um, state and that might and then we'll have to actually like 
make sure we display properly when the state is already archived and yada, yada, yada. But um, that would be a thing to do. Okay, I think that makes sense, he says, hopefully. It's a bummer that we're going to leave with this in a broken state, but this happens sometimes. Um, so uh, I'm going to wrap this up. As I mentioned at the beginning, we should be here tomorrow night for evolutionary computation in Rust. Um, and then we will probably not do either of the Saturday streams um, because of radio station 50th anniversary stuff. And then we will, um, I'll be here on Tuesday. So I think that I'll be here Tuesday morning next week. So maybe we can finish this then, um, not finish the whole app, but at least fix this mess. Um, and that would be good. Uh, and then, uh, the rest of the week is gone and the rest of the following week is gone. So there'll be basically one more, uh, two more events, streams, one tomorrow night, one a week from today, and then there'll be sort of two-ish weeks, a week and a half of vacation, and then I will be back. Um, and we can pick up where we left off. So um, thank you all very much. Uh, I very much appreciate the feedback. Um, and uh, thank you for helping me with that bit of a mess at the end. Uh, that was confusing. Um, and I don't know quite, yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that'll play out, but I do think that adding the um, new state um, previously archived option, I think will be the right answer. And we'll just keep all the repositories in all the things just have them labeled properly. So <laughs> thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Um, and I shall see everybody hopefully tomorrow night. If not, maybe next week. If not, some other time. So thank you all very much. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.